Coming up this week on Ralph and Vicky's Archer's Choice. It builds it up even more. That when it does happen, it work. was well worth all the sweat and the blood and the yeah. tears to get to that point. The gratification right. when you do it on your own yep. is overwhelming. It is. Welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. This week you're heading to Iowa. I don't get to go to Iowa this year. Oh, well. He drew a tag and I didn't. How cool is that? It's not that cool. It really isn't. I love going to Iowa. Oh, so do I. Where the big deer roam. The big deer roam. They do. Yes, they do. On our farm. I know. I know. And you get to go and I don't. Yes. It just ain't fair. You went the year before. So did you. Oh. Yeah. I'm just lucky. I guess so. I'd rather be lucky than good any day. Let's really, head to Iowa. Let's head to Iowa. You know, I mean, we put time out there, putting in the food plots. Oh, yeah. Getting things ready, putting up our spy points, making sure, you know, we're seeing what's going on. Yep, and I mean... And then you, you draw a tag, and I know. And you, you wait, you wait, and it's almost... Well, for hunters, it's like, I won the lotto. I won the lotto. Well, you really do. You win yep. the lotto. You draw a tag in Iowa, a bow hunting tag, and it's like, ah. Da, da, da. La. It's like the light shines down upon yes. him. Yes, yes. <laughs> Let's get going to Iowa, shall we? <laughs> yes. Let's go hunt. Six hours is almost over. We're uh, almost at the farm in Iowa, and it's um, heat index, I think it's like 110 degrees. So it's not like we're gonna run out and just do all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm too old for that, and I'm smarter. But we are gonna, you know, we're gonna get cameras out. We're gonna s clean up some stand sites. Maybe I just can't wait to get that back to the farm. Looks like we have some grass to cut. Iowa Farm has about 200 acres of land, consisting not only of hefty amounts of thick timber, but also open fields, some of which will be used for food plots. Doing exactly what we do every summer. We're getting cameras out, we're getting our spike points out, and we're getting them all ready to start seeing what's on the farm. We put a lot of time and effort to get our, our areas, our deer hunting, ready for season. You know, for a lot of people, they don't realize what, what all goes into it. Right. But, but the thing is, is we're so fortunate that we, we can do it. Right, we go ahead and we have, we have our tractors, we put in our plot, we try to make everything the best uh, we just can tr for trimming, whitetails. Trimming lanes, and I mean, just like anybody, you know, and, and, and even if you're, you're hunting someone else's property, but you hunt it every year, you go in early season, you know, yeah. or, or, or spring, you trim, you do this, you cut new trails, you do whatever you need to. Right. You put your food plots in. I mean, it's all part of it. It's called preseason setting up and scouting. And um, it's, the index is like 110 degrees today. It's hot, so we're trying to get this done as fast as possible. We got the main trail, but I'm trimming it out. What it does is I think it just, it builds it up even more. Right, right. That when it does happen, it's just that much more. It was well worth all the sweat and the blood and the yeah. tears to get to that point. And all the thorns. There's more locust trees in Iowa than anything. And I'm telling you, 
you just, uh, and they, next thing you know, you're getting, like, you got an infection because they just stuck you. you, you know what I mean? But, I mean, it, it is, it's, it's so, it's so, the gratification right. when you do it on your own yep. is overwhelming. It is. Little simple things. Wind. Hitting that, you just break a branch, you slide this down, and you're rigged up all the time. And all of these little tips are going to help you be more successful. Especially if you're hunting public land and someone hears all that tinging, they're going to come investigate. And guess what? Because there's a lot of non-ethical people out there, they may take your gear. Don't take that chance. Iowa's first modern deer season was held in December of 1953, with 4,000 deer being harvested. Currently, the deer herd is estimated to be approximately 400,000 after the hunting season, and reported harvests have exceeded 100,000 in recent years. Careful management of deer populations by hunters has played a critical role in allowing deer numbers to return to the levels enjoyed today. Management consists of prudently regulating the harvest, since hunting provides the only major source of mortality for deer today. Unchecked, Iowa's deer herd could expand at a rate of 20 to 40% each year. At this rate, the deer population would double in as few as three years. Deer numbers this high would cause economic hardship to Iowa's landowners and alter the natural vegetative community. Keeping the deer population in balance with the wants and needs of the people in the state is a difficult task, and hunting is the only viable management option to achieve this goal. Well, I just walked into the cabin here in Iowa, making sure everything's good, and I think it is. Everything looks good. No broken water pipes. No. And, as y'all know, it's been a crazy, crazy fall. Uh, from me getting sick in Alaska, to just everything going just nuts. And so, believe it or not, it's early November, and I'm out here in Iowa by myself. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm getting all my gear straightened up, getting ready to rock and roll. Here's the bottom line. We do this because we love it because we love it. So I'm gonna try to get it on camera. And God willing, it could happen. Maybe. But the bottom line, I'm not gonna get frustrated. I'm not gonna get aggravated. I'm gonna do the best and I'm gonna capture the best footage that I possibly can by myself. Not used to this, so here goes. We don't know what's gonna happen, so you guys will be the judge. I hope to not let you down. So Iowa came, I had Christy coming in from Realtree yep. to Illinois, For Illinois, and you went to Iowa on your own. Yep, and you know, I, I was, I, I just, I got my tag. I mean, I, I... You don't want to burn the tag. No, and, and I, listen, I commend anyone who goes and films themselves, because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not the guy. I, I, I mean, I had You a, try. I tried. I tried, and, and I mean... I and just, we used to. Oh, we did. We did. Yeah, but, but now we're used to filming. Yeah, each other now or when you have a camera else. guy in yeah. back you all the time, yeah, you you get spoiled rotten. I tried to make it happen, and, and I mean, it was frustrating. And then a buddy of ours, Steve, you know, Steve and, and Hoppy were down on their farm in Missouri, and they both tagged out. Right. And I mean, and Hoppy tagged. They both. A monster. Oh my gosh. I mean, we should, hopefully we could even share just a photo. That was a magnificent deer. And then Steve said, hey, Ralph and Hoppy, you know, if, if you need, I'll come up and fit. And I'm like, are you kidding? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And, and so, so he had a day and a half to come and, and I mean, we wasted no time. Sure enough, man, I mean, we had some encounters. It was really cool. Steve, we're in this locust tree and we ain't, we ain't high up. No. Now, Steve likes to get where the geese are flying. He likes to be eye level. So so I'm sitting there, I don't get that high. My nose starts to bleed and everything. I mean Well so, yeah, it's probably higher to you than others. Wow. Wow. 
Go ahead, Steve Wait, likes to go pie. Pull that knife out of my bag. <laughs> Thank you. So we're, we're up, we, 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 got, we got our stands 18 foot up, you know, maybe 19. And so Steve and I are in the stand and we're committed. We're, we're, we're sitting there the whole day because that's all we, you know, he, he's, right. he's, he's, he's gracious enough half, to help right. me out. And uh, we see a nice buck and he's further down and he all of a sudden he disappears. And we're like, oh, we couldn't got our wind or anything. Well, what he did is he went down in the draws. He was check, set checking. Set checking. And then lo and behold, a few hours later, and here he comes. And I mean, he's coming and he comes right there. And I mean, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I can't pass that up. No way. When I got a buck that's right there and, and I got my hoy, yeah, something's gonna die. With the help of friend and fellow hunter Steve, Ralph is now in the stand with a cameraman. And before long, a buck approaches. And I mean, he's coming and he comes right there. And I mean, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I can't pass that up. No way. When I got a buck that's right there and, and I got my hoy, yeah, something's gonna die. It didn't take you guys long at all. No. Seriously, your Iowa season, after waiting for that tag for four, three years, your Iowa hunt was done in like two days tops. I'm all about getting it done. <laughs> and it don't matter to me. I'm gonna have fun, but most of all, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna bring home fresh, fresh venison. All kinds of venison. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm pumped. Thanks, Steve. That was fun, hey buddy. That was thank you so much. But you know for coming and helping. I mean, I was in a jack. I was in a jack spot and a jackpot and you made it you made it happen, Stevie. That was a good time. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, man. Good seeing you. Hey, another buck down on our farm. And look at all that meat. Oh, uh, this is gonna be good stuff. And he didn't go far, did he? Oh god. Where do you go? 20 yards? Maybe. Maybe a little more. Maybe 30, yeah. 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 He shot him at like five. I, I need him close, buddy. <laughs> Stevie, we got in our, we were walking in and I'm showing him the stand. He's like, where are they coming? I said, right underneath us. This is kind of tight. <laughs> I'm like, buddy, don't worry. Don't worry. Huh? I was like amazed. I was actually telling Ralph, I said, have you ever thought about moving it over to that stand? Yeah. We got a little distance. And then all those deer were just coming in, not even looking at us. I said, don't move your stand. Don't move Whatever you do. <laughs> uh, all right, buddy, we got him tagged. We'll right, him good, and... good job. Thank you, brother. Right. Appreciate you. I love Iowa. I love Iowa. I love Illinois. I love the Midwest for, for our white tailed deer. RJ, but then I love the I love the West for our elk and our mule deer. Then I love the North for the moose and the caribou and, and the bears. And the Northwest for the grizzlies and, and the brown bears and. And you if know, he had it his I, way, we would move to Iowa. Well, we wouldn't live in Illinois for I, I many think, many many reasons, and I understand it. But we have family here, so we will stay in Illinois for a little longer. Finally made it to Iowa. Um, check out this accommodation we get to stay in. Thanks to Ralph and Vicky letting me go stay at their place. Then you come in and look at these sheds that they tease you with. This was, he even puts a date on them. 15th, he found them. 15th. So we'll see what happens. We'll give it a shot tomorrow. It's supposed to be pretty cold tomorrow and windy. Before hitting the hay, RJ looks through the Spy Point trail camera photos to see what tomorrow may have in store for him.
it, it's been seven years since he hunted Iowa or something like okay. that. Yeah. So he was so elated. He came out, we, we, were, we were cutting trails and everything in the summer, and I mean, hung some more sets and put more tr spy points out. Got everything and, ready. Yeah, and he was just glowing. And then to find out, you know, that he's, you know, he, he ended up going out there with a buddy of his. Yep. His buddy was going to film, which which was great. And uh, I, I mean, he had, he, he saw. He, he saw some of the big guys. Yeah. He, he, he went later he than you. He went like a week later than Ralph. Yeah. And those big boys got on their feet. He experienced what, what most people perceive or dream of. Iowa being, or the Midwest. He, Let's just put it the Midwest. And I mean, he was describing some of the deer that he saw that were not the deer that we have on our spy no, points. I mean, no. he's got some, yeah. That's because we have the girls. Yep. You know what I mean? The girls are there that time of year. The boys are going to come and say, hey, want a date? <laughs> he's at 11. As the week continues, RJ has daily encounters with a substantial number of deer, both bucks and does alike. Part of the whitetail's ability to thrive in Iowa is the result of an abundant, reliable food source and a winter climate where snow depths rarely exceed 12 inches for a prolonged period of time. The excellent nutrition also enables deer to have high reproductive rates, with some does producing a single fawn their first year and many two fawns each subsequent year. Although plenty of deer stay in the area where they were born, a large portion leave and travel to new locations before establishing a core area. These core areas often change seasonally, with deer shifting between wintering areas and breeding areas. These movements allow deer to fill voids left open due to deaths and easily pioneer into new places when the habitat is suitable. You know, although RJ never never got you know got an opportunity, right. I mean, he sure he he saw what it was all about. He did, and he is he was so covered up with great deer and experience. And I know to to date, every time we talk on the phone or text, he's always asking, Ralph, you know, what what, what have you seen in Iowa? What do you? <laughs> he's hooked. Yo, RJ, you know, from Joyzy, you know, the guy from Joyzy. He had some fun. He, you know, he had some opportunity almost. You know what I'm yeah, talking about? Yeah, on the deer? Yeah, on the deer. On the deer. The deer. He was trying to get one of those big Iowa bucks. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? Yeah. Joycey. He's going to kill me. He is. Big guy is It wasn't me, RJ. Me. It wasn't me. All him. Congratulations. Thank you. It was awesome. It you was. Know, when, when you were able to, to make it happen on your own right. property, you know, d doing everything, your food plots, just doing it all is just... It's like you it, earned it. Yeah. Yeah, it it's was It's a gratification cool. I mean, that just... And RJ had some great encounters, just uh, didn't happen, the poor guy, but now he knows. Oh, yeah, he's... He's done. He, he's he, done. He, he he's can't done. wait. You know, you know what I'm talking, RJ. You know, gotta get back. Get, get back from Joycey. You know, you get back to Iowa, so you you go after those big deer. And I mean, your deer is beautiful. Oh yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah. And I mean, we've had a rough fall up to that point. Oh, rough. things went crazy, Ooh. but you succeeded. And yes. Congratulations. And, and I mean, it was really cool, Steve. Thanks for helping. And and I mean, bottom line here is what hunting is all about. It is. So hey, thanks for watching this week's Archer's Choice. We'll see you next week. Same time. Same channel, right here. Archer's Choice. Really? Archer's Choice? Archer's Choice. Do you know this is the, the, the 18th season of Archer's Choice right now, and that was the last one we had to film? 18, 18 years. 18 years. Think we'll make 20? We'll make 20. Huh? We'll make 20. You guys think we'll make 20? I think we'll make 20. Our cool. camera guys are going 25. I think they're Listen. saying they're saying 52. No, oh no, X day <laughs> on that. Uh, uh, not gonna happen. <laughs> Thanks again, guys, and everyone for always watching. God bless us. you. God Thank bless you so much. Thanks.